Hello everyone, it's March 21, 2012, and you probably already know that on March 20 at 18.02 UTC time there was a 7.9, later downgraded to a 7.4 earthquake in Osaka, Mexico, and that was actually six minutes after a 6.2 occurred in Papua, Indonesia, and this is what the earthquake in Indonesia looked like on the map, and this is the one in six minutes later in Osaka, Mexico. And this is what the seismograph looked like five hours after the initial shake. 2349 on March 20. As you can see it's rather black. This is definitely the biggest earthquake we've had this year. And this is a worldwide shaking, a worldwide movement. It's carried on for about four hours. Okay, in contrast, the earthquake in Japan on March 11 last year, this movement carried on for four days. So, put it into perspective, but still this is the blackest we've seen it so far this year. And the only seismographs that don't go black are the ones that aren't working. You can see Antarctica, it wasn't operational at the time of the shake. That's the only reason is it's not black as well. If you look at another Antarctic one, you'll probably find it is black. I'll quickly find an Antarctic one in the moment. Mongolia again, it wasn't working at the time of the shake. That's why it's not black. Here's a, another Antarctica seismograph here. Okay. And what did it look like for me locally? Well, this is what our local seismograph looked like in Taiwan. Um, clearly a lot of movement. This is what it looked like in Sierra La Laguna, Baja California, Sur, Mexico. And this is from Tepic, Yucatan, Mexico. This is the beginning of the earthquake here, obviously. And things stabilized about three hours later. You can start to see a bit of a line, and not really until four hours later. So there's at least four hours of decent movement. If we look back at, say, the local seismograph here, we started at 18 and 5 or 4 minutes, 1804, and actually in Mexico it didn't start until 1806. So we actually, we've got a, a movement ahead of Mexico. So there you go. This would be the the one in Indonesia, I guess. And of course, Indonesia being one of the most seismically active regions of the world, doesn't even have a seismograph display here. But there you go. Okay, so Philippines. This is the one I could find that started the earliest. So the first started just after, maybe one minute after six at 1800, Philippines. So that's getting close to Indonesia. It would be nice to see what it looked like in Indonesia where the first earthquake was supposed to have been. If we have a look at the earthquakes, tides and alignments charts, we can easily see that in terms of absolute energy, March 20th was the most active day so far this year. The previous most active was January 10 and February 2nd. So let's pull up the log of energy and you can see that we've got several other peaks that fall in there. And there's something very interesting that I've noticed about this, and I didn't mention it in my previous video because it didn't really seem to make any sense. But um, now that we've got this extra earthquake, I think it's time to mention this other observation I've made. And that's in terms of a pattern which perhaps supersedes this prediction for March 22nd. On February 26th this year, we had a magnitude 5.9 here in Taiwan, and that showed up in seismographs all around the world. However, a few hours later there was a 6.7 in Siberia, 
and that sent the world size against black. And then if you go to the halfway point between the magnitude 7.3 in Sumatra on January 10, you find you get to the magnitude 7.1 in Vanuatu on February 2nd. And then it turned out if you took the Vanuatu earthquake, the halfway point between that and the Taiwan and Russian earthquake was the Solomon Islands at 6.4. And if you add to that, there is another earthquake in Vanuatu, which is a 6.7 at the same interval. And halfway between that earthquake and the one in Siberia and Taiwan, we've got one on the Loyalty Islands at 6.6. And if that interval repeats itself, I was thinking, well, there's something going on here. And of course, we had that interval again in Japan, 6.9 was measured at. And now, on March 20, there's two earthquakes, one in Indonesia and one in Mexico. And that's the pattern that we're looking at. So what is the interval between the main quakes in the sequence so far? Well, it appears to be 23 and a half days. And then, between the secondary quakes in the sequence, it's 11.75 days. And then for the quakes in between those, it's 5.875 days, or 5 and 7 eighths of a day. So how does this fit in the pattern we'd normally see with conjunction between the Earth and Moon and the Pleiades, or Orion, and, or Jupiter, and getting earthquakes on those kind of alignments? Well, it's looking like this is now the overriding pattern and it supersedes everything. And the pattern seems to be getting more defined and stronger. So how does this pattern fit in with the 188 day cycle? Well I still don't think there is a 188 day cycle. I thought at best it was a 377. And I think this pattern actually overrides that. And we're more likely to see something on March 26 rather than March 22nd. But I don't think we're going to see anything major on March 26. You've got to keep in mind we've got the magnetic pause reversal the other day. And of course I've been trying to triangulate an object using the sea level minimums. So do we have an intruder in our solar system that has a rotational period of 5 and 7 eighths of a day? Or perhaps has a moon with an orbital period of 5 7 eighths of a day? I don't know. But uh, it's something to think about.